Okay, this is 2019 FRQ number three. This is on the non calculator function, uh, non calculator portion. All right, so number three says the continuous function f is defined on a closed interval between negative six and five. The figure above shows a portion of the graph f consisting of two line segments in a quarter of a circle centered at the point five three. It is known that the point three, comma three minus root five is on the graph of five. Okay, so that will come in handy later. Okay. So part A says, if the integral from negative six to five is defined as seven, find the value of the integral from negative six to negative two, uh, show the work that leads to your answer. So negative six to five, think about what it's saying here. It means that if we extend this graph out all the way to negative three, four, five, six, negative six, I know the full length of the area here, that's equal to seven. And then from the graph here, I can see the area here from negative two to five. So if I can use the seven, subtract what I see here, I will have the region from negative six to negative two, which is the integral I want. So by that definition, I am saying that, let's see, I am saying that the integral of negative six to five of f of x dx, subtracting the integral from negative two to five of f of x dx, will give me the integral from negative six to negative two f of x dx, right? So this part is seven. We know that that's from the problem given to us. And now we just need to find the area of what I see right here in front of me. All right, so let me clean this up so it's not all the way in our way. All right, so what is the area here? Well, let's see. Area is defined as the region between the curve and the x-axis. So the area I'm looking for is this piece right here, this piece right here, right? And which actually cancels each other out because one's positive, one's negative, and they're exactly the same. So that's gone. This half triangle and this half triangle also cancels each other out, beautiful. So really the only piece of, the only area that I'm really looking for is this region right here, this trapezoid, and this other region, you, you can't have to separate them because it's not, uh, you can't really calculate it the same way. You want this region that could be, uh, that could be calculated by taking the square, right? So I take the square, and I subtract out the semicircle, take that out, that would leave me that piece right there. So again, that's my game plan here, okay? All right, so let's see, what do I know? I know this area here is one half, base one is one, base two is three, times the height of one, that's one half times four times one, the area is two. Okay, so first piece is two, and then the second piece is, all right, so my game plan was take the square. So the square is three by three. So that's nine minus a quarter of a circle, quarter of pi r squared. The radius is one, two, three, all right? So that's nine minus nine pi over four. So plus nine minus nine pi over four, that's the, uh, the curvy triangular part, right? Okay, so let's figure this out. That would be seven minus two minus nine plus, 9 pi over 4, so that would give me 7 minus 2 is 5, 5 minus 9 is negative 4. So the region I'm looking for from negative 6 to negative 2 is 9 pi over 4 minus 4, and that would be defined as my area, okay? All right, that's it for part A. Part B says evaluate. Okay, so I'm going to use whatever space I have here. This is part B. Evaluate the integral from 3 to 5 to f prime of x plus 4 dx. So let's separate some things out. We know, first of all, our coefficient can go outside. So 3 to 5 f prime of x. And you can also split the um, integrals so that you are adding the two integrals up. That way it's a lot easier to calculate this, right? So the first piece is 2. If I were to take the antiderivative of f prime, it becomes f of x, right? So f of 5 minus f of 3. That's the fundamental theorem of calculus. And then the constant here, 4, times the difference of 5 minus 3, right? I apologize. So um, so f of 5, we just need to look at our graph here. Let's clean this up. I have a bunch of stuff here. This is super messy. Okay, so f of 5, this is a graph of f, right? So um, we can go ahead and look at the graph. So f of 5 is 0. The y value is 0, okay? So f of 5 is 0 minus f of 3, so over 3 here. It says 3 is, the y value is 3 minus root 5. Okay, perfect. So 3 minus root 5 plus 4 times 2. So that would give me, again, this is, uh, let's distribute some things, negative 3 plus root 5 here, plus 8, so that's negative 6 
plus 2 root 5 plus 8. So my final answer is 2 plus 2 root 5 for my integral here. Okay? Okay, so for part C here, it says the function g is given by g of x uh, is defined as the integral from negative 2 to x of f of t. So we are actually looking for the absolute maximum on this g interval between negative 2 and 5. So remember, g of x is now defined as an integral. So that means if we're looking for the maximum, we're looking for when g prime of x goes from a positive slope to a negative slope. So g, well, go, where g prime of x, g prime is a slope. So where g prime goes from positive to negative, which means then if we're looking for g prime, we're like really looking for f of t, looking at the graph where the graph went from positive to negative. So where, where it was above the x-axis to below the x-axis. So where does that happen in my graph? It happens right here because it was above and then now it's below. So this is a possible, it is a maximum, whether it's a relative max or absolute max, we got to check against our endpoints. So the endpoints of this graph is negative two and five. So we're going to check. First thing we say we have a relative max at x equals negative one. Okay, now we're going to check our endpoints. Okay, so we're going to look for g of negative two, g of negative one, and g of five. Okay, all right, so based on definition, the first one is the integral of negative two to negative two, f of t dt. All right, this one's no brainer because you went from negative two to negative two, there's no interval. This is a zero. All right, next, this one's negative two to negative one, f of t dt. Negative two, negative one, okay, that's a good order. Um, it goes from small to big, a to b, right? So a to b, negative two to negative one. If I were to look at this graph here, from negative two to negative one, that is a uh, half a triangle. That's exactly one half, right? So that is equal to one half. And g of five is defined as negative two to five, f of t dt. Okay, so from negative two to five. So we talked about this, right? We said that negative two to five. So these, if I go from negative two all the way to five, first of all, these two areas will cancel each other out, done. This area and this area cancel each other out, done. So the only area I'm looking for is this piece plus this piece, right? Well, we know what this piece is. We got it from part A. We're gonna look for part A to kind of help us out. If I recall, part A says this region here is two and this piece is nine minus uh, nine pi over four. So together, that part is 11 minus nine pi over four. So. I don't know what 11 minus nine pi over four is, but I can guesstimate, right? So 11 minus nine times pi is about nine, pi is about 3.14. So let's just estimate three, right? Nine times three is 27 over four. So that's 11 minus about uh, four times seven is 28. So we're at about seven, right? So about four. Why am I doing that? Because I know this is definitely bigger than the one half, definitely bigger than the zero. So my absolute maximum is actually at this endpoint at x equals five. So I will say absolute max at x equals five and the value of 11 minus nine pi over four. All right, so that is your maximum value, okay? All right, because so, it's looking for the maximum value, okay? Last but not least, part D here says, find the limit as x approaches one of 10 to the x. So x minus three f prime of x all over f of x minus r tangent of x. Okay, with any limit problem, first thing you wanna do, plug it in and see if you have any trouble, right? So you plug in the one, you get 10 to the one minus three f prime of one all over f of one minus r tangent of one. 10 to the 1 is 10 minus 3. What is the derivative of 1 on this graph here? So let's clean this up. Since 1 is right here, and that's part of the linear part of it, so the slope here is up to right 1, up to right 1, so f prime is 2, f prime of 1 is 2. And then f of 1, the value of 1 here is also 1, the y value of 1 is 1. So I get 1 minus arc tangent is tangent inverse, tangent inverse of one, who has a tangent of one, pi over four. So we get 10 minus six is four over one minus pi over four. So um, typically is not a great answer. Um, I, would, I would really strongly suggest to clean this up so that you have one fraction. This is kind of not the best. So first thing I would do is cart pi crisscross applesauce at the bottom, make it one fraction. So you get four minus pi all over four 
and then multiply by the reciprocal. So four over four minus pi to get a final answer of 16 over four minus pi for your final answer. Okay, all right, that's it for this problem.